during a 2011 study where 36.5 thousand people were studied, they found that around 7.6% of them have experienced sleep paralysis. Now, it is estimated currently that about between 25 to about 50% of people in America have a sleep paralysis experience due to the fact that many people do not report it to doctors. <laughs> Sleep paralysis, what is it? Basically, sleep paralysis is the state in which a person is conscious but temporarily unable to move or speak. It can last for a few seconds or a few minutes. Oftentimes, people report feeling a pressure or sensation or heaviness on their chest and sometimes even see hallucinations. So why am I going to be talking about this today? When it comes to hauntings and attachments, I've noticed that sleep paralysis is pretty common in those instances. So I thought it would be a good idea to share some ways that a person can overcome it. Because to be honest, it can be very scary, especially if that's not something you're used to. So there are two types of sleep paralysis. You have the sleep paralysis that is a sleep transition disruption, and then you have the paranormal kind. So the first one that I call sleep transition disruption, where there's a disruption in the transition between sleep stages, which can be triggered by various factors, such as sleep deprivation, irregular sleep schedule, sleep disorders, stress, anxiety, and certain medications. Sometimes it can even be genetic. Now, when it comes to this kind of thing, it's important that before we rule anything paranormal, especially if you're going to do it on your own, that you seek a medical professional first so they can rule out any health issues or to make sure, you know, it's not something caused by any sorts of medications that you may be taking. While this can occur during different REM sleep transitions, it can occur outside of it too. In the transitional periods, the brain may partially awaken, but the muscle paralysis characteristic of REM sleep persists, leading to the experience of sleep paralysis. While this occurs, sometimes dreams bleed into reality, or the brain creates images in the form of hallucinations. Now, I get a lot of people that say, oh, sleep paralysis isn't paranormal. Um, actually, it can be either or as I've just stated. For those who experience this type of sleep paralysis, there are things you can do to lessen the amount and or stop it. Talking to your doctor to find underlying causes may help you understand it and or come up with solutions. Additionally, maintaining a regular sleep schedule, practicing good sleep hygiene, managing stress, developing relaxation techniques. One thing I'd like to add is Try creating a good sleeping environment for yourself and rid yourself of any distractions. So like maybe put your phone on silent. Um, I don't know, maybe don't sleep with the TV on. Sometimes, <laughs> okay, there's like this meme going on where people wake up in sleep paralysis to the George Lopez song, you know, at the beginning of all his shows. <laughs> to be honest, me too. <laughs> I've actually woken up in a sleep paralysis because freaking George Lopez, the theme song came on blaring and it scared the bejesus out of me and it wasn't a paranormal sleep paralysis, it was just a normal sleep paralysis. So yeah, you, you don't want to do that. Turn your TV off. I know some people can't sleep without their TV, 
But if you're someone that's having trouble sleeping, I would try turning it off. It is always important to remain calm and remind yourself that it's temporary, that sometimes our body reacts in this way and there is nothing wrong. Try breathing exercises and focus relaxing your muscles. Sometimes what I'll do is, if it's not paranormal, even if it is paranormal, like I'll focus on my fingers and my toes and I'll just try to wiggle them and then eventually I get out of it. But I've learned that, you know, it's not something to fear. Um, and especially if it is paranormal, you don't want that negative entity to feed off that fear. But, you know, in general, it's not something to fear and you can always get out of it. It is temporary. And there are ways you can, you know, lessen the amount of occurrences. Now, for paranormal sleep paralysis, Typically, a negative entity is responsible. They too can create hallucinations or sometimes the person actually sees them, especially when they are more in that in-between state of sleep and being awake. This, during my peak haunting, OMG, like I would see so many things and it was freaky deaky. Essentially, the negative entity will do one of four things to put a person in a sleep paralysis state. So number one, they will hypnotize them into this state knowing full well they will wake up in order to scare them, in order to create a fear response, which then creates negative energy, which creates a food source. Number two, they are manipulating their dreams to create an environment full of anxiety and or fear to create negative energy. Number three, attacking them on the ashram to create an output of negative energy. Or number four, just outright draining them in their sleep that they awaken to seeing them in their personal space, although in all of these situations, the entity may be seen. So this is why they do this. Stopping sleep paralysis, what can you do? I have 10 tips for y'all. So one thing you can do is sleep with black tourmaline or obsidian. So you can wear it as a necklace or you can put one under your pillow and under your mattress. The whole point is to make it where, so if this is you laying on the bed, so the entity can't get you from above or below. You can even put some on your nightstand so they can't get to you on the sides, but essentially that is what you wanna do. And you obviously gotta make sure that you charge those crystals every full moon or you can bury them in the ground for seven days, but just make sure you have ones to rotate with. That way you're never without those crystals. Number two, this is my favorite and absolute like recommendation for anybody experiencing paranormal sleep paralysis. Holy oil. Holy oil on all of your chakras. I'm not kidding you. It works. I don't think I've ever had a time where it didn't work. So you're going to put holy oil on all your chakras before bed. Okay. And it should act as a great barrier to protect you from negative entities. If it doesn't work, uh, maybe check the source of which you got the oil from because you might have gotten scammed. And, you know, I'll put the link down below of where I get my stuffs. I have a new holy oil. I love it. It's amazing. And it hasn't steered me wrong yet. Number three, you can surround yourself with a golden white light or just a golden light and create your barriers like do this in a meditation before bed that will help you number four cleanse your space because chances are if this is a regular occurrence you either have an attachment or you have you know a haunting and you need to kick out the entity that is in your space or you know you have residual negative energy number five call for the help of benevolent beings like Jesus, Archangels, Shiva, whomever you pray to, okay? It doesn't matter what religion you're in. As long as you have benevolent like deities or spirits that can help you. You can use, for number six, a black salt ring around the bed. I don't really recommend this, but people have used this method and it has worked for them. But personally, I don't know, it gets really messy. So, I mean, you can do it. You can do it but that's not my favorite type of method. Number seven, ash on your third eye. And this ash would be something from like uh, incense, like Palo Santo or sage, 
um, you know, stuff like that. Or you can use a black obsidian stone. I used to have a flat one that kind of like molded to my head. And that too will help you because it will cleanse out your third eye simultaneously. Number eight, sleep to positive sound frequencies. So you can find them on YouTube or meditation apps. I use, I think it's called sleep pillow from time to time, or sometimes I will sleep with a YouTube playlist of like high frequencies or positive frequencies. I mean, if you really want to get technical, you could do Gregorian chants. I don't know, that that to me isn't too pleasant to listen to, but if you're somebody that's very like into religion, maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it'll put your mind at ease, but you know, just the binaural beats or the frequencies will work too. Number nine, sleep with your animals in your room. You might think, what do you mean? Well, okay, this might not help you every single time, and it also depends on the animal, but like dogs and cats are very psychic and they can actually protect you from attacks. And so, yeah. And they're also, depending on the animal, good at getting you out of sleep paralysis. And that is something I've learned with my dog, Ghost. Um, he saved my butt multiple times. I've had um, sleep paralysis experiences where I fell asleep on my beanbag chair in the living room and I got put in a sleep paralysis and Ghost literally got me out of it. And I am not kidding. So some animals are really good for this. And then number 10, you can use a combination of these. So like if you want to sleep with crystals and holy oil, cool. That'll probably even be better. But um, it's always good to make sure you cleanse your space regularly because it'll prevent negative things from draining your energy, whether they put you in a sleep paralysis or not. So I highly recommend that. So yeah, um, these are the 10 uh, tips for, you know, stopping sleep paralysis. And if there's any ones that I missed you want to add, let me know down below. Also, any thoughts, questions, concerns, let me know down below. I value everybody's input. And you know what? I'm learning just like everybody else here that's watching this video. Okay. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow tomorrow. Yeah. If you like these types of videos, I highly recommend watching the video of the 15 tips on how to open your third eye.